The pendulum is a dowsing tool like all others, but it is a great one to start out with. Why? Because people have seen it used before, because if you just let go and let the energy flow through you, it works. It's when we get all uptight, is, is this real? Is this really going to work? Or when we come to a pendulum session with fear and doubt that it lets us down. And so if you have that happen, my best advice is don't go to the pendulum when you're really hungry for the information. Wait until you're in a state of calm and peace. Think of this. Don't go to the grocery store when you're feeling like you're starving. You haven't eaten all day because your cart's going to get full of a bunch of stuff that you'll probably throw out later or even worse, binge on. Same thing with the pendulum. If you know what is your yes response, no response, and neutral response, they will never let you down, period. I've had so many students say to me, I've bought several and none of them work. It is your subconscious, your soul self that makes them work. And once you understand that, you will get an answer every time, even if the answer for now is neutral. That would simply mean the answer cannot come right now, or you can check later. And keeping notes, a pendulum notebook, is the best way to keep track of things. So what are we going to do here in 40 to 45 minutes? First, I'm going to very briefly cover how to select a pendulum and how to cleanse it and get it started up. We're going to spend the majority of the time actually identifying your yes, no, and neutral, and then testing it out. So I want to tell you, I'm going to make some more pendulum videos after this. Your benefit of having signed up here today is that you get to type a question in the Q&A box. And I probably won't get to them today, but I will make a video answering all the questions that are answerable. So during this session, if something pops up, put it in the Q&A box and know that there will be a second video where I provide more information. All right, so how long have pendulums been around? Since the 1600s in clocks, but there is ancient evidence that pendulums were used for dowsing in the Middle East and in the Roman Empire. So this is nothing new. I know some of you already have pendulums that you use. Some people don't have one yet. So if you like, when we work on the identifying your yes, no, and maybe, and using a test question, work along with me. If you're just watching to decide if this is right for you, one thing that I want to say is that this is not a scary, bad, evil tool. I say that, and if you've read my book, Soul Smart, you know I hyphenate that scary, bad, evil, because there are so many TV shows out there about this is bad, this can let in something bad, this can lead you down a wrong path. And I guess that's true if you want it to, but if your intention is that you are using this dousing tool for what I call the three H's, and this is borrowed from Edgar Casey, the sleeping prophet. If you're using it for helpful, hopeful, and healing information, that is right for you to have, no problem. Like attracts like. So you don't want to go into the session upset or desperate. You want to go when you're in a, like a calm, neutral state. And I'm going to help you have a method to do that. All right. So let's get started. The first thing is, I'm going to spend just a little time on this. The first thing is choosing the pendulum. There's all kinds of sizes and shapes, and you can make your own. Um, do you remember Jack's, the tool, the, the toy with the jacks in the ball? I've seen people take a little piece of metal like that and tie a string to it, and that works. I've seen every shape that you can imagine, but I will tell you 
that if you plan in the future to run your pendulum over something like um, a board with letters or numbers and spell words out, having this nice pointy tip is very, very helpful to get a precise reading. Does it really matter what you use? Only in one respect have I found that it matters. If you're allergic to nickel, you probably don't want to have a chain that's nickel plated. So anything that really doesn't resonate with you, rule out. For example, I have some people who there will be crystals that turn them off. Um, malachite being one, it has a specific protective use. I love it. I have a, a pyramid of malachite at my front door because it's very protective. But some people are like, Ew, that's got a time and a place and I don't want it on my pendulum. So I guess whatever vibes with you will work. It's all in your intention. And that's a word that we hear all of the time. And intention is super important for any dousing tools. Okay. So to get yourself centered, I have a meditation um, that I use. I can use either my daily piece meditation or simply do a little bit of breath work. And so when I use the breath work, I just make sure that I've got my heart rate nice and even. You know, like I've had a lot of caffeine today. So a little while ago, I sat down for about 20 minutes and just focused on my breath, my breathing. And I also want to tell you that since my 30s, I've had a hand trimmer since my 30s. And, it, you know, I'm glad it didn't develop till my 30s because when I was in college, I had to wait tables and tin bar. And can you imagine having a shaky hand doing that? So for those of you saying, this won't work for me because I have a hand trimmer, I have Parkinson's or whatever. Yes, it will, because I've been using a pendulum since my 30s or earlier. And my it's a slight hand trimmer, but it still works. The soul is in its natural state. You are calm. You are peaceful. You are centered and you are grounded. But by having some kind of intention statement, protection prayer, if you will, whatever you want to call it, words that you say, thoughts that you think, before you start, it's sort of like uh, Captain Jean-Luc Picard on the Enterprise saying, you know, engage. You're just going to engage with your higher self, your soul self, your higher self, your soul self knows more than you do. Your guides can be having discussions with your higher self as you're doing a session with your pendulum. I will be doing a video to show you specific things to do to have a session with a loved one in spirit, to have a session with a guide. There's so much more to learn, but we're going to focus on life issues, right? So the first thing that we need to do is if you have your pendulum with you, I want you to just place it in your palm. That's so funny. When you put your hands near the camera, it's like, I got a big hand. <laughs> Hold it to your heart. So I do this every time I use it. But if you've bought a brand new one, you might want to smudge it or spray rose water mist on it or bury it in a house plant so it's in Mother Earth overnight. Um, if, it, if it's a crystal that can handle being in sea salt, it can sit in a place of sea salt. Um, you know, you have a bowl full of sea salt or a plate or whatever, just to cleanse other people's energy. If it was on a counter in a metaphysical shop, you know how many people stuck their hands all over it. So those are the kinds of things you do when you first get it. This is the kind of thing I do before a session. So holding it to my heart, my intention is that all information coming through is right for me to have and is helpful, hopeful, and healing. You can make up your own words here. Now I want you to close your eyes, take a big, big cleansing breath in, blow the breath out.
And now we call upon divine source to link this pendulum to our energy centers. We give gratitude that we are powerful beings, that we have access to information through our soul selves. We sit now in a beautiful golden bubble bathed in white light. This seals in our intentions and positivity and seals out distractions with gratitude. And so it is pretty simple. Now there's two theories about which hand to use. My answer to that is use the hand that works. I mentioned that I had a trimmer develop in my thirties. It's not equal. Sometimes my right hand shakes a little more, sometimes my left hand, but I think it's a good idea to use the non-dominant hand. Therefore, if you're right-handed, put the pendulum in the left. If you're left-handed, put the pendulum in the right. But again, use whatever works for you. That's always best. And then I want you to sit now and think about a question that you want to ask and go ahead and have it in your mind. And as we Find out what is your yes, no, and neutral. That question might change. Pick a life issue question for a little bit later and just have it in mind. You might want to write it down because I have a feeling that as you learn a little bit more in the next few minutes, you might rephrase or focus that question. All right, now let that go. And now we're going to find out What is your yes, no, and neutral? And if you already know, you can just play along or um, test it again. They'll change over time. What was my yes and no um, 10 years ago or 12 years ago changed over time. And I sat down and said, huh, this seems a little different now. I don't know why, but I know how to know for a fact that I have the pendulum perfect. And it's like this, we're gonna test your yes answer. So go ahead and pick up your pendulum. I wanna show you this. I just took a necklace chain and knotted it to make a pendulum here because I found this beautiful pendulum and I did not like how it was attached. And so I thought, well, I'll buy something pretty to put it on. It was like on a necklace. I don't want two strings hanging down and it was ugly. And so I just had this chain lying around. I'm like, Oh, I'll do that. I've in a pinch used twine. So you don't have to spend a bunch of money on these things. Although I have way too many. Okay. We're going to use your first name. We want you to ask a question that you know the answer is yes. So I'm going to ask, is my name Suzanne? When I start the question, I always say pendulum, and that's my engage, right? Pendulum. Okay, let us let it come down a little bit. It's always going to move a little bit, all right? Don't worry about that. To make it totally perfectly still, there's always some kind of air somewhere. Here it's the AC. I cannot go without the AC. It's like 112 here. So it's always going to move a little bit, but you're going to see in a moment that it moves in a way that's unmistakable. Okay, so I'll sit still. Pendulum is my name, Suzanne. So I'm trying to hold my hand still, but see, see my little vibration on my hand? It's just always like that. It breaks my heart to think that people won't use dousing tools just because they have a little trimmer. It's not like I'm swinging it around. So you may be getting something like this back and forth. You may be getting nothing. Maybe it's just vibrating with the AC. Whatever you got asking the question that you know the answer is yes to, 
make a note. Believe me, people forget. Was it like this for yes and like that for no? Just make a note, okay? So I would put yes equals circle, all right? Now, when you finish asking a question, ground it. That can be in the palm of your hand. And that is a signal that says, thank you, next question. And you can even say, thank you, next question. You could tap it to the table in front of you. You could let it rest in your lap. Thank you, next question. As long as you're consistent about moving on to the next question and how you signify that, you're good. So now I want you to come up with a name that's not your name. And there's going to be somebody here with this name, I'm sure, but I'm going to say Bob. If you're Bob, change it to Suzanne. How's that? So Pendulum is my name, Bob, or, you know, something else, if you're Bob. One time I did this in a class and I wasn't thinking I used John. I got a lot of email after that. So funny, you picked my name. My no is side to side. It's starting to go a little bit in a circle, but I just looked at my hand. It's a little tr trimmery. But it's side to side. And I'm going to go over and see if this hand's better today. Uh, yeah. This one shakes less today. Side to side. So I'm going to say, thank you. Next question. I'm going to write down no equals horizontal or side to side, right? Now we got to find out neutral, don't we? Let's talk first a little bit about what does neutral mean? Part of it could be the question that you're asking. So here's an example I've used before. Is it fair to ask, is my neighbor having financial difficulties? In general, no, that's called none of your business. <laughs> However, let's say your neighbor is your 50-50 business partner and you need to know if they're having financial difficulties. That arguably can be fair to ask. So you may get a neutral because you ask a question that you don't have the right to ask. You can also get a neutral because it's not time for you to know yet. And you can also get a neutral because the information is yet to develop. When you get a neutral, you should write in your notebook, I got a neutral and set a date on your calendar to go back and ask again. Depending on how long of a time frame, you could ask in one week, every other week, month from now, your discernment will let you know when to check in again. Don't get frustrated at your pendulum. It's like getting frustrated at your soul self because through the idiomotor response, your soul is giving you information. I just saw a big, bright white flash of light. Those are things that I see when um, guides are close. I know that they're having fun with this. So also make a note if you ever see like a flash of something to the side or you start to see things in your peripheral vision, because anytime you use a tool like this, you are signaling the universe, I am ready to let my light shine more brightly. If nothing happens, that's fine, but always make a note. It will give you more information about the trends and patterns and how you're receiving. And sometimes the pendulum will take off so fast before you finish your question, ask, your question anyway. Get the words out so that later on you will know that you asked it. You will know it wasn't mixed up with something else. I hope that that makes sense. All right, so we're going to do pendulum 
show me neutral. What is my neutral? Show me neutral. So there's always gonna be some little movement, like my AC is blasting right now. But it's not much of a movement, it's like I'm staying in place. Believe it or not, I've had students, and I was teaching one-on-one -on -one before, so we could spend a lot of time on questions and then I had to go to classes because there were so many people. But I had one woman one time, the pendulum was swinging wildly and that was her neutral. So make a note of what your neutral look like. And you need to know that doing this once is not enough. You need to be able to replicate these responses. We're not gonna do that right now because we have limited time. But if you're not writing down what responses responses you're getting, how are you going to know if you can replicate it? When I've worked as a research medium for a university, everything gets replicated. Everything is double blind, triple blind, do it five times, 10 times, whatever. Why should you do any less quality control for yourself and your dousing, right? Okay. So is it right for me to ask? May I ask this question? Um, if you're making a list of questions for a session, let's say you have three questions and you've written them down. And as you get a response, you'll write that down because believe it or not, you think it's easy to remember this stuff. It isn't. You get swept up in the moment and you're like, wait a second, was it neutral for question number two or was it yes? So you're going to, if you were doing three questions, you'd write them down and then you'd ask this question. Pendulum, are any of these questions unclear? And get a yes, no, or neutral. So let's say you got a no. Great. You can start with your questions one by one. Let's say you got a neutral. Yeah, I don't know. Let's say you got a yes. There is a question that's unclear. What would you do next? You would say, is question number one unclear? Okay, let's say it's no. Is question number two unclear? Yes, okay, I need to ask that question much more clearly. I'm sitting here looking at my question and it says, will my house sell? Well, <laughs> your higher self is saying, yeah, but how useful is this information? What would be more useful to you? Here's an example, will my house sell in the next 90 days? Now where I am, houses sell in 90 minutes right now. It's been like that for a while. But this is a very good example of how you might as well not have had a pendulum session because your answer was terrible. Your question was terrible and your answer is not useful. So it is always, always, always a good idea to write down a couple questions and ask, are any of these questions unclear before you do the session? Otherwise, you're treading water. You're not going to make it to the other end of the pool of knowledge. Okay, so we've clarified our questions. If you have any doubts, you could even ask at this point, are any of these questions unfair for me to ask or not right for me to ask? And if you had to ask that question, you know, you know, you know you're spying or whatever. Here's another example I get a lot. Um, someone wants to know, will I have a partner? in my life. And you can get yes all day, but you could also get a false negative because you're saying, will I, will I ever have a partner, a romantic partner in my life? You might get a false no, because right now the trajectory you're on is a no. Like during lockdown for a lot of people, you know, it was hard to date, right? So because that question wasn't specific, you can, you can cause some, yourself some harm to your emotions. So another question might be, um, am I on the right track to meet my romantic partner? And furthermore, am I on the right track to meet a romantic partner who is good for me? Okay. And anything that you want to ask, you can, 
you can get it to a series of yes or no questions, folks. It's not that hard. It just requires a little patience and thinking. Okay, so at the end of your session, let's say you've asked two or three questions. Pendulum, do any of these questions need to be asked again? If you get a no, you're good to go. If you get a yes, does question number one need to be asked again? Until you identify the one that needs to be asked again. Look hard at that question. It might need a little fine tuning and then you can go back and do it again. So you've got a process here. Let's play. Even though I know for some of you, you haven't had a chance to replicate your yes, no, and neutral, it's fine. Let's play and just be lighthearted with it, okay? So let's do this. I want you to go back to that question that hopefully your life issue question you thought of earlier, you now can examine it and see if it is focused enough. If not, Revise it now, okay? You've got some ideas about how to make this really, really, really useful to yourself. Did, notice, did you have to change your question? Did you have to make it more specific? Was it something maybe you probably shouldn't be asking, All right? So we've done the grounding, we've done the thank you, next question. Right. You could even in between questions go, I'm taking a white light shower, letting that go. Whatever feels right to you, some way to signify on to the next. So ask your life issue question. Hold your pendulum however you like to hold it. Dominant hand, non-dominant hand. I'm going to do one too. Okay. Thank you. Make a note of the response. Now, right now, based on how many people signed up to watch this live or the replay, there's going to be probably three or four people who are saying my pendulum isn't doing a gosh darn thing. It's not moving at all. That's okay. Give it time. Not today. Put it away because today is not your day. Come back in a couple of days or tomorrow or whatever and practice again. You can play this video again and practice. Okay. And for everybody here who just today identified their answers, yes, no, maybe, and how they come through, you're going to have to test this again with a question that you know is a yes answer, a question you know is a no answer. Replicate this two, three times today or whenever, but have patience and know that it is right and natural if all of a sudden you just put the pendulum down because the answers are coming so fast to you. That's an ideal, right? They're just popping in through clear cognizance, I simply know, and the pendulum just verifies it. Or for some people, I'll never need the pendulum again because this kickstarted something in me. It's wonderful. Take everything that comes to you that's helpful, hopeful, and healing as a gift, right? Okay. So I mentioned writing these things down. It's very important because your mind will make more of this and amplify it. Your mind will make less of it and leave out information as you think about it later. And you need not labor over some big, long journal. It's just the date, the questions, the answers that you got. And know that there are many, many tools out there. And in one of the pendulum videos I'm going to do, I'm going to show how people spell out words. And it's kind of fun. It reminds a lot of folks of a spirit board, a talking board, Ouija board, but it really isn't. And there really is no problem with a spirit board or Ouija board if you're using it correctly. Instead of like who's around me, who's out there, um, that you're very, very focused and you're working only in love and in light. So 
Oh, good. We do have a couple minutes for questions. Now, remember, if you're typing into the Q&A box, I will find those questions, the ones that I can't answer. There's usually like eight or 10 questions that are very, very similar. It's easy for me to answer them. I will make another video and send it to you. So I'm gonna go in the Q&A box and I'll mention again that there are enhanced techniques with the pendulum to connect with a spirit loved one or connect with a guide. And those need to be in a video too, but you have enough to do that now. I can just make it easier for you. Okay. Okay. Great question. Is the pendulum affected by sitting with a skeptical person? First off, don't let anybody else play with your pendulum. If somebody grabbed it and is like, what's this? I would spray it with the rose water. I would sage it. <clears throat> I would do something to get their energy off of it. But if you're sitting doing this session with a skeptical person, you need to be strong enough and centered enough to where you're not attached to the outcome of their reaction. If you feel like it's going to affect you because you are the pendulum, your soul self is the pendulum, don't do the session. Cast not your pearls before swine and dogs, lest they trample upon them is my motto. Okay. Can I use any pendant as my pendulum or is there a particular kind? Lots and lots of theories on that. If you have an affinity for your amethyst um, pendant, just do what I do. Take the necklace. And I'm glad that I use this because it just shows you how you can just kind of make anything you want. Take the necklace apart. Tie a little knot here so that you can use it as a pendulum. But the point on the end will become more important if you're going over letters or numbers or a map, if you're going over food, a menu, if you're going over prescription bottles, which I just did the other day. I have a dog that's a special needs, special, Baron's now a special needs dog. And I've used the pendulum going over the medications to help me figure out you know, which ones to take is like the vet told me certain blocks of time and I've got it down to exactly what time to give them. So if you vibe better with a certain pendulum, that's your pendulum, but it should work with just about anything. Can I just use a piece of paper with yes or no? on letters of the alphabet. Yes. Many, many people don't spend a dime buying anything to put their, the pendulum over just whatever you have is good. Uh, another question, how to ask questions that avoid should, you know, it depends. Uh, sometimes should I is um, appropriate. Other times, should I is trying to deflect responsibility for your own free will. But knowing that you're asking your higher self when you do this, you're not asking a pendulum. Um, your wording just needs to be really, really specific. Uh, a substitute for should, and it's a good question, could be, is it in my best and highest good? Or does it align with my highest purpose to... X, Y, Z. So yeah, there are people that will use should um, as a way to try to shift responsibility and get answers in, when they're sitting on a fence. And really, this is about discernment, right? This is yourself speaking to you. I have a small selenite dish. Would this be a good cleansing place to keep my pendulum? That is so interesting because I had mine sitting all night on a selenite heart. It was just sitting there and it just looked, it looked lovely and it felt good. 
Um, my hand that's holding my pendulum is vibrating. What do you think? Uh, sometimes we get really excited or we've had a, a little too much caffeine or I've mentioned multiple times about the hand trimmer because I don't want people thinking they can't do this. So I wouldn't be surprised to see little tiny vibrations. It's, you want to look for the pattern and the trend in the movement. And that is where replicating will help you out. Oh, you know, there's always some little vibration there. I saw... Uh, a man one time, the when it was neutral, it actually had like a, a bigger like movement. It was like this. And he, he did not have a hand trimmer, but his neutral was like, we were joking. Like it was almost like there was a battery, you know, and, and it was just something was making it move. Spiritual batteries. Um, and there's a couple questions here about hands getting hot um, or... Um, the pendulum just feeling like it's alive. And that is how your brain is filtering the experience. So where you're allowing your subconscious soul self to have the experience, but the conscious mind is wanting to make sense of it. And so you'll get sensations and feelings. It's not that guides got their hands on your hands. They, they actually will, you know, just be around you. It's not like a spirit loved one sitting and blowing on it or something like that. It is that idiomotor response that you're not aware of, but your higher self uses to make this happen. And some people are sensitive and the brain, um, the conscious mind is very good at analyzing and rationalizing and making decisions about what is this really. And so that can come through in many, many ways. And remember, caffeine can affect you too. But it's, caffeine is not going to make wide swings around and around and back and forth, right? Um, let's see. Yes, I have used this pendulum to spell things out. Uh, but I've gotten to the point now where I get the word so fast, I really can't do that anymore. It just comes into my head now. Do you need to establish yes, no, neutral at the beginning of every session? No, just replicate it a few times, just a few times. I'd say if you do that three or four times with questions, you know, the answer is yes. And questions, you know, the answer is no, it's all good. When I would go back and do it again, it's not every session, but if all of a sudden, man, that, this thing is doing something I've never seen it do before with me. Then I go, yeah, let's go back and get that baseline. So now that you know what I'm talking about, we're going to call that a baseline. And you'll see me use that term in in the future pendulum videos. And last question, and then I'll have to make the video to answer all the others that I can. Will your yes, no, and neutral be the same over different pendulums? Yes. And if it isn't, go back and reestablish your baseline because it's you. The pendulum is not magic. You're the magic. And so I want to thank everybody who is watching this live, who is watching the replay for wanting to do this right. And why is it that that's important? Well, you may find that somebody else does something differently. So use what you discern to be right for you. I'm here to give you the empowerment so that you can trust your results because it's the trust that you have in your intuitive abilities that gets you more and more and more. And when you close a session, give gratitude. I give gratitude to my spiritual team, my loved ones and spirits, my guides, any of those that you feel close to, Archangel Michael, Moses, Jesus, thank them all for the gift of your intuition and your discernment, and it will only bring you much, much more. I'm Suzanne Wilson, the Carefree Medium and Intuition Educator, and you can find me at carefreemedium.com. For now... Bye-bye. I'm sending you love with a capital L. That's not like how I love pizza. 
That's how I send love from my heart chakra to yours. 